What up, gamers? I'm Jason, and today on Dice and Dragons, I'm joined by Ryan from the Bridge City Board Gamers, and we've got Meeple Dungeon, Rob, and Anna Marie that are joining us as well for this latest episode of Kickstarter Excess or Value featuring Witcher, the old world. So you already know who I am. Uh, for those of you that saw the first video, you know who Ryan is. We'll let him introduce himself again in just a moment, but uh, let's feature our newcomers, Meeple Dungeon. So tell our viewers a little bit about yourselves. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Rob from Meeple Dungeon. This is Anna Marie. Hello. And uh, yeah, we've uh, generally over the last few years, it's just been me kind of doing the board gaming thing. But over the last few months, since we joined the Witch for Blaine Wednesdays podcast thing, uh, Anna Marie has joined, yeah, from Bridge City Board Gamers right here. Um, Anna Marie has joined me and she's been huge into board games uh, as much as I have, but she just hasn't had time to join in on any of this stuff. So she's found the time and we're both in it together. And here we are, and we're huge board gamers. We've been playing, well, we really got back into board gamers back in 2013. We took a trip to Finland to see a friend of ours out there, and board gaming out there was just crazy, and we'd always been, you know, into it, but out there it was just nuts, and we got right back into it over yeah. a three-week span. Over there, we brought a whole bunch of games back with us back here, and since 2013 or so, we've been right back into the hobby pretty full-time. And yeah, we've got ourselves on Twitter and YouTube. We've just kind of revamped a new channel there to do uh, unboxings and videos and, and things like that. And uh, But yeah, we're just crazy board game fans and uh, love talking about it, doing everything, anything with board games. And here we are with these gentlemen to talk about Kickstarter and The Witcher. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. So Ron, I'll let you take it away and introduce yourself. Tell us where we find you. Yeah, sure. So I'm Ryan and I'm one third of the uh, podcast Cardboard Conjecture, where I'm hosted with uh, Ian and Norm. Uh, they're not as big into Kickstarter as I am, so they have not as much input that I could possibly uh, bring forward. But and then we also Norm mixes together the What You've Been Playing Wednesday podcast that Rob and Anna Marie and Jason and Julie are all part of and plus a whole bunch of other great Canadian content uh, people. And yeah, and I, I joined Jason and uh, John from Friday Night Games on the first episode. We're going to call it episode. I don't know what we're going to call it. I guess it. so. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it got a fair amount of views and a lot of good comments. So I figure we might as well keep this up and just uh, have a fun rotating cast. And it's a great way to, to talk about some games in depth, something that uh, we don't always get to do, uh, at least Julie and I don't get to do uh, on our show in terms of discussing like the value and the presentation and sort of, you know, the whole marketing and the uh, machine behind uh, selling a game. Yeah, no. And it's a really interesting topic. I always have, always have thoughts. So thanks for having me on again. Uh, thanks for joining me. Well, and uh, joining us. I'll be us joining myself <laughs> and uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, what uh, we're going to be doing with this is we will be discussing the value of The Witcher, The Old World, also giving our thoughts as if it's excessive, if it's good value, where maybe there are some misses in the campaign. And if you want to skip ahead to our thoughts, you can take a look down below in the video description. Skip ahead up to the timestamps. On our first episode, Ryan and I had some fun just discussing Kickstarter in general, some of the things that we like about Kickstarter. And as this is the first time the Meeple Dungeon is joining us, we're going to start with a few questions for them. If you want to hear uh, Ryan and mine, uh, our thoughts on the issue, well, there'll be a card that's popping up. So you can take a look at that. You can hear our thoughts and even jump back into the video later on. So go ahead, Robin, Anna Marie, take it away. Uh, let's start with your Kickstarter exclusives. What are some of the good exclusives that you like to see in a Kickstarter campaign? Okay, so <clears throat> for me, uh, board gaming uh, on the tabletop here, for me, I like to be immersed in what I'm doing. So on any game that I see that has minis, per se, like The Witcher we're going to talk about here, um, it has minis, right? But then some of the components will be not minis, right? So we're talking cardboard standees or even just tiles that lay on the board horizontally. And I find a huge disconnect when I don't have everything the same. So I find on... on uh, a game like this per se, uh, when minis are available, um, 
as a as an exclusive or whatever i kind of i kind of like to go all in on mm-hmm. on those type of things and you just love minis in general i do love minis <laughs> um but but i i'm, I'm also uh i'm easy going per se like if, if it's all standees i'm fine with that and i find that if my character is a standee versus the monsters that are standees i can kind of connect that way but if there's my character's a nice really nice mini and the the monster is this little tiny standee cardboard i get a disconnect there so when it comes to exclusives and and uh, components like that um, i just love having the option to get replacement parts and and replace standees with minis if i'm being a mini in a game and and yeah so i that's kind of my thoughts on that excellent what about you anna marie i think for um for the exclusives i'm more on the I don't want to miss out on exclusives. Yeah. So if Huge you're, FOMO, yeah. yeah, that way. So if it's, uh, maybe you didn't get the Kickstarter and then you end up getting the game retail if it is available. And then you're like, oh, that was available in the Kickstarter and I can't get it. That's, you know, that's, it's kind of a love hate when I'm in the Kickstarter and getting it. It's like, yes, I love it. That's going to be awesome. But then if I didn't do the Kickstarter and I didn't get that, I'm like, oh, nuts. You know, like, <laughs> I wish I had it. Yeah. But but yeah, I the do C-mon like model. the Simon model, like rising sun, get the Kickstarter, get two extra clans. Don't get the Kickstarter. You'll never get these clans. Right. Right? Which yeah. what? Like, I don't, that I don't drives know. me nuts. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly that. <laughs> awesome. So you mentioned FOMO. What are some good FOMO moments where the fear of missing out got to you and you're really happy that you decided to actually end up picking up the game? And one of those ones where uh, the fear of missing out had that game show up on your doorstep and you couldn't wait to get it out of your house. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, probably one that we'll both agree on for we are very glad we gave in to the FOMO was Lords of Hellas. Uh, was one yeah. of the ma- biggest uh games that we'd gone in on at the at the time where we you know threw all our money at it and we got everything all the every deluxe everything every expansion did we i don't know if we got all the expansions on oh, them yeah. did no we? we ended up did getting we? them all they all trickled in but we got them all and it's um yeah i couldn't be happier with that because that game on the table this looks insane and i love having every bit and piece of that game um as far as a game that i'm glad i didn't go in on it's been mentioned several times on many podcasts around here is the new Batman, uh, the Dark Knight game. And I'm a huge Batman fan. We're both huge Batman fans. And I was so over the moon when I heard about this game. And I was all in on it until I heard that it was a solo game, which we are neither of us very much of a solo gamer. I, mean, I do the odd thing, but generally we like to play. It's something that we can both play. Or have people over, you know. Uh, I, I agree with you. The nice thing is there are some solo games like Under Falling Skies that kind of work well. I, co-op, but the solo mode is always great if, uh, you know, Anna Marie's not really driving with something and you're not yeah. driving with something, but you want to yeah. finish it, then you can finish yeah. it. Totally. And so I I was all in. Like from the get-go, the first second I heard about that game, I was all in on this Batman. The second I heard it was purely solo. I was so bummed. And then I heard that they had added in like shoehorned in a, a like a two, two player, player. G- uh, version and i i decided against it and i'm kind of glad because the price was ridiculous on that game so i'm kind of glad i didn't pay a huge amount of money for a game that would have been more or less built to be a solo game with a shoehorned in two player thing um so I'm, yeah i'm happy that i didn't do that and i'll eat crow if that two player is is great yeah. but i'm doubting it's super so yeah, wow. it was against all my judgment on wanting Batman, and I, I still, you know, I decided against it, and I'm kind of glad I did. Well, I'm really happy you brought up that solo and co-op aspect, because I think that's going to be a large part of the conversation as we move on to The Witcher. Now, is there anything that you happen to pick up because of FOMO that you just really regret actually adding to your collection? There was, I don't know if I would consider it... Um, we got it because of FOMO, but we got it because it looked fun and we were excited for it. And what was is that? Um, I think it was another zombie one. Um, we got it and it just, there were missing pieces. Oh, zo- zombie Tsunami. Zombie Tsunami. It just yeah. was a fun little so, game. Like it wasn't anything crazy, yeah. but there were pieces missing, the cards missing, the, like it just. And it, we waited forever yeah. for the game. And then it came and, and we just, 
we didn't even bother writing to them to get us the right piece or like whatever like, oh, yeah. it, was a, it was from like four or five years yeah ago. but that was disappointing but we were both stoked it on it. it looked like a fun little great game for the two of us to play and it, it just showed up and it was just horrid it was miss yeah like she said missing bits we've never played long it. bits bits that <laughs> so weren't in the game to begin with yeah. and it was just the strangest thing and yeah so that yeah. that that was disappointing but overall we've been pretty happy i yeah. think with anything we backed um there's been some that have had lesser components than i hoped for i think it was winterborn was one of them um but overall no we've been pretty particular with what we've wanted to back we've, we learned our lessons early on and uh <laughs> we've uh, made good decisions since then I, I think ron and i are still learning some of our lessons <laughs> there's been a few that yeah. have showed up in uh, real quick <laughs> Well, that, that I, I like I like that we're talking about The Witcher because I think I've started to kind of be a little bit more humble when this project came around. So, <laughs> yeah. and, we'll uh, see by the end of the show. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll, I think we should all talk about our stances on The Witcher when we get to that. Just one last question, then we'll move on to the uh, the main topic. What are the bad exclusives? Those exclusives that are almost like red flags. Uh, you mentioned one that I already talked about, that shoehorned in co-op mode. Uh, I talked about it on the last show, but Agents of Mayhem was supposed to have a co-op mode. It has a 60-page rule book. That game moved out of my house during uh, during the pandemic because I still hadn't gotten the solo and co-op cards and I had to self-print them. I was like, oh, my God, like, no, that's just a nightmare for me. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. Um, what can you think of that? Do you have anything in mind? Um, I think that the ones that we've kind of gotten have just been yeah they've always been pretty decent. Um, we've only backed on Kickstarter. We're we're like between thirty and forty games that we've backed on Kickstarter. So we've been really particular that way. Aside from this guy, I can see across the screen that's backed like a hundred and whatever games on <laughs> Kickstarter. <laughs> so I mean, Mark, you're bound to have a few misses there for oh, sure. Oh, I I think I might be. I think Ryan and I probably backed the same amount. I I think I'm. I'm definitely getting close to like 300 games. Oh but, my goodness, uh, yes. But, so, but I want to say there's a lot of $1 pledges in there that yeah. actually <laughs> arrived. Yeah. Well, I mean, on, or no, go ahead. I was yeah. just going to say, um, I had to step away. I I was, um, yeah. I would always be like, oh, Rob, Robbie had on his phone. And so I'd be looking at all on his stuff and then he'd be looking at it. And I'm like, well, why don't I just get the app? So I, I got it and I started looking and I think I got like five games in a month. And I was like, I need to back Ooh. off. <laughs> this adds up. I didn't realize how the the payment happened. Yeah. And so I was like, oh shoot, this is all gonna come at like one time. And then yeah. <laughs> so I I was like, So oh, I, I had to take control of the actual <laughs> like you do pushing that. the button on the pledge, I'll, right? I'll take a look, give you my opinion yeah. and see what we think. But, but no, we're uh, we may have ended up with a lot more worse. We would have for sure. If I just backed everything yeah. I wanted to. There was a few that we backed out last minute. And I'm glad we did. Yeah. I can't remember exactly, but there was quite a few that we were on the fence about and we jumped out and I was glad. But yeah, no, that shoehorn solo thing, I I still feel that that's just wrong. I, I, I think they know deep down that that's probably not going to be good <laughs> and that they just appeased all the people like me that were angry that there's such a game, you know, with this theme that you know, I'd, I'd kill for this game, but then it's only one player and I just, yeah. So that was probably my biggest disappointment. And, and with that comes, yeah, finding out that a game is solo on this grand scale, you know, like I can find solo games, like you said before, that they're, they're fantastic solo games out there, but this is one that needed not to be. And mm -hmm. it shoehorning, shoehorning that in uh, just disappointed me on so many levels. So then I have to ask, did you get the other gigantic Batman Kickstarter, the animated series game? I did not. Um, I meant to and realized that I hadn't pledged it. I thought I had, and it came and went. And I, yeah, that's totally awesome. on me. Otherwise, yes, I would have that coming. As well. I hope you get the chance to find it. I, I'm waiting for mine to come in. I've got the TMNT game, and the system is a lot of fun and tried it. Well, if you yeah. have, have you tried on TTS or uh, Tabletopia? No. No, no, a buddy of mine has the the Turtles version, um, and it's awesome. And yeah, no, I've been kicking myself every day since uh, discovering <laughs> well, that I did not. Play. Take a look. I'm, I'm sure there'll be someone that'll want to sell their pledge. Uh, at oh, yeah. No, I'm all it's on the list to, to, to find. But no, we don't have it coming. And I wish mm -hmm. it did. I'm excited to see what you have to say for sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Well, there we go. We got a nice little introduction to our first time guest, the Meeple Dungeon. And now let's move on to The Witcher, the Old World. And let's start with our stances on the game. So currently I have pledged for the deluxe pledge. I have not added any add-ons and I was looking at it today and I didn't make up my mind yet. I figured we'll have this conversation on the side, but I am actually looking to going down to a dollar. I think I'm pulling out of this one. There are quite a few things that I have see as gigantic red flags on this one. And I think it's going to be a, one of those ones that I think I'd buy it. I think I'd regret buying it, but I do feel that if I, it it's not great. It's the Witcher. I would have no problem selling it for even potentially more than what I paid for it. So there, there is the opportunity to take that chance, but I think I'm going to lean towards getting out of this one. So if we have another much from Ryan, you take it away. <laughs> okay. Um, I have not pledged it. I have had from probably day one, the uh, saved and remind me, and I kind of just <laughs> keep coming back to it every now and then, like just um, today, just before the show here, I'm looking over it again. And I'm just like, mm, things are here. Like they look, they look nice. I haven't now I since I just did the saved uh, remind me thing, I haven't done the full detailed um, research of of watching like any of the like kind of like the reviewers or the people that are are playing it right now. I haven't really gone into that yet. Uh, Maybe I'll rely on you folks here to kind of make me make my decision. Um, I'll probably make my decision by the end of the episode. I'm I'm probably I'll, I'll probably be on that way. We are currently in the deluxe um, pledge, yeah. And we've been looking at it a lot uh, over the last couple of days. And you know, it seems like every time I turn around, something else has been unlocked. And I was just looking at it now, and it has sixty-one unlocked stretch goals. Mm. Uh, but which are about uh, there's like twenty monsters alone, mm-hmm. of, like uh, different oh. monsters, minis that you can. I think we need to talk about let's so let's talk about that core pledge though that you've got the 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 deluxe version of the game and the base game those are really your core pledge which is getting you all of the content and if you go deluxe you're getting the minis if you're going standard you're you're not really getting the minis and this is one of the things that i'm i'm starting to call more foul on when it comes to kickstarters you know it's as you pointed out it says 64 deluxe stretch you know stretch goals unlocked none of those are stretch goals they were already built they were already in the game Bingo. It's all pure marketing hype. And one of the things that bu- bugs me a lot about this, and uh, I think you're getting a, a lot of value in the game, but I really feel like they've turned the hype machine. And it's I'm happy that you're seeing that many things unlocked because if the campaign hadn't gone as well and less things were unlocked, I think you'd really be looking like you're getting fleeced That's for the value. That's what's going we're on. Discussing, we were discussing that only an hour ago, saying that this kind of game needs the support to make it worthwhile it needs to have the extreme amount of backers to do the all these unlocks that are you know not part of the game but are now making my value you know well may or may not be worth it you know but like if none of this stuff was unlocked and you're still paying the what's going to be 200 dollars or something for this game after it's all said and done and half of these things weren't unlocked then we got a a real uh, you really have to think about it a, lot a real problem on our hands do because, i need this deluxe version or, right yeah so yeah. yes I, I fully agree with that that this is designed to be in the game and they're counting on getting these backers and they did um so it, they are available and that's the only reason at this point that i'm uh you know i'm still <laughs> on probably leaning towards getting it at the moment but yeah we'll see what the uh, end of this conversation yeah. take, is. take like take a look at the numbers right now we got 35,000 people have backed this thing. 27,000 of them are del- are backing it at the deluxe box. That's over 75% of yeah. people who are wanting this game are wanting the minis. Who wants those little cardboard chits to represent your monsters? And, Not- and that's 100% yeah. me. I, I can't do it that way. I'm kind of one way or the other. I, I can't have a great, awesome mini representing me and then lots of little cardboard chits all over the board as these um, monsters. We're supposed to be fighting. And when we're looking at the Witcher game, and I, I feel that one of the reasons why you're seeing so many people doing the deluxe is because it is a competitive game uh, at its core. And there's it's not story driven. It's one of those things where maybe if you know they weren't this was a story driven Witcher game, you could get a great experience, you know, with like standees 
or having your mini and then the standings because you're getting all this cool story. So yeah, I mean, you know, maybe saving those 50 euros well worth it. You're still going to get a great experience. I think, you know, like having my Witcher being like, oh, I'm going to hit that standee. It's not the same thing as when it's getting the miniature, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's fun. Like I've got the Power Rangers game. I've got the giant like Goldar and like when the Power Rangers beat Goldar, they're standing on top of Goldar because that's <laughs> what it has to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, definitely. No, we fully agree with that for sure. Yeah. So overall, I what what do you think of the that core pledge? Is now with everything unlocked, I think there was a lot of value, but I I definitely think that value was very much deceptive and not there at the start of the campaign. Does everyone pretty much agree on that, or is there any other thoughts? Yeah, because if you take even if you take a look at two, um, what's what's the difference between them? Uh, Fifty five euros is the difference between your uh, your standard pledge and your deluxe pledge. Um, I guess one has to evaluate is the 55 euros for all of those miniatures. Um, is, is, is that, is that, is that worth it? And, yeah. and, and like you said, there are how, how many, how many of these things did they unlock for the deluxe edition? Like tons there, there, you just, you just keep scrolling and it's like, yep, this is for the deluxe. Yep. This is for the deluxe. Yep. This one's for the deluxe. This is an upgrade. Uh, type of thing. So I guess you just have to really e evaluate for yourself. 55 euros between cardboard chits and nice. Oh, so nice. I'm looking at them right now. Oh, so nice. Oh, so nice miniatures. Yeah, is, but don't is, forget, is that we worth it? not seen an actual render of the miniature. And I mean, sorry, uh, an actual yeah, miniature. That's true. These are all 3D renders and there's been some great, great looking games. I mean, we, we could have an entire conversation about failed Kickstarters. I don't know if any of you saw the overturn like uh, Sands of Time Kickstarter. The game looked fantastic with a whole big thing, but it turned out to be basically a scam. When they when they <laughs> showed the rule book, it was Massive Darkness's rule book, like reprinted. But yeah. Finally got it done, like reprinted with new art. It was such a mess. Beautiful minis though. Beautiful minis and such a cool idea. But it was just, it's one of those things. So you always got to keep that in mind that these are not yeah. the actual miniatures and who knows what this they're actually going to look like. I mean, a great example is uh, Awaken Realms with a Tainted Grail, which yeah, you can see <laughs> over there. Yeah. You've got the uh, Ale miniature in there, one of the uh, the healer, the druid with the druid like character with their staff and her staff does look nothing like the 3d render it's like a giant like goop like for whatever reason oh, no. that staff just couldn't come out like the rest of the mini looks good and then it's like a lumpy staff and they're just kind of like yeah whatever this is what happened <laughs> i get why people are frustrated but and it's, sometimes it's very difficult to do these things especially in unicast yeah yes. and, and now for this project too i'm looking there really isn't a lot of Kickstarter exclusive. Like we've been talking about, like, hey, like usually these campaigns get us on that FOMO. Like you can only ever get it on Kickstarter. I'm only really seeing that there's kind of like one little, ex I don't actually have no idea if it's a big expansion, little expansion. They're calling it the yeah. Lost yeah. Mount expansion. Yes. It doesn't look like a big one. No, there's a actually, I, I don't, the Kickstarter exclusives in them, those kind of things, they do kind of bug me because if you can't get everything on Kickstarter, right? Like you can, you, like, well, I can't. So sometimes you do have to wait for it to come, you know, like retail. But then if there's something that was just so cool that you missed, it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice when it's not like crazy. Yeah, this one it really leans that way where it's, it's a very little actual yeah. Kickstarter exclusive, right? So Well, from, from what I've heard and what I've understood that they will not be taking this game to retail. This okay. will be oh, right. the game itself will be printed on Kickstarter just because of the cost. It's a deluxe version cost of 120 euros. They don't want to put it on the shelf. Yeah. And if you look at companies yeah. that have had issues with that, uh, best example is probably Monolith with Conan. Uh, they worked very well with Asmodee. They got that into stores and now they're not working with Asmodee and they're back to their, their yes. Kickstarter yeah. model just because of uh it's hard to sell, like, you know, people walk in, pick up a board game in an FLGS, and it's not like, hey, $300? Like, that doesn't happen often. I think, yeah. I think that's actually really interesting. Yeah, sorry. This is actually really interesting because do they actually say it anywhere on this page that this is not going to like retail distribution? I have, you don't, they do not. From I was reading it on, uh, on Reddit, going through a lot mm. of information on it. I believe it was 
the designers put it out in the comments. Could it be in the FAQ? But it's definitely, it's not on the campaign page. Ah. Advertising it as a Kickstarter exclusive. Dirty. <laughs> you you definitely get a lot more FOMO uh, yeah. backers if they if they if they plan like put it like right up there at the top. This is a Kickstarter exclusive campaign. Like we are, we have we have evaluated this campaign, and we yeah we are not going to put this into regular distribution just because of those reasons that have have been said. Uh, I get the feeling that they would do it if it makes sense, but I don't think they want to put themselves like, you know, locked mm. in either way. So they're just telling everyone that for now, this is going to be Kickstarter only. Yeah. I was just looking at the FAQs and it's, it's not in there. So it's somewhere else. Yeah. So, so it's, it's it, but, but some information are, is out there. It's just yeah. not, if you're, if I'm a regular Kickstarter person and I really don't go to Reddit because Reddit is Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Mm. I, I think you could probably find it in the comments. Like I said, it, it's, yeah. I believe it's because it, the deluxe version is the one that's selling more. As you pointed out, Ryan, it's got 75% of the sales, meaning that if they really wanted to make a retail push, that's what they're looking at getting to the shelves at a $120 value. Uh, sorry, 120 euro value, meaning right. you get that over here. We're at what? 150, 160. And, that there's, there's very few games that I see that move at that price. Yeah. 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 Current, well, current Canadian re, uh, um, uh, translation here is about $185 Canadian for that 125 Euro. So then you got, yeah. No, go, go ahead. Let me. Yeah. And then you have to add on like down at the bottom here, you're looking at around an extra 25 Euro shipping on yeah. top of that too. The, yeah. The last games that I saw priced high that moved fast. And I mean, as when they stick in stab at this again with a uh, descent uh, journeys in the dark, that mm -hmm. one's priced really high. Lucked out for one games had it underpriced. They put it up at the U S price and I got it at that price. So yay me <laughs> saved about $50 <laughs> on that one. Awesome. But uh, like journeys in middle earth. I know that one like sold off the shelves that one people were just picking it up around that 130 price point. So this one will definitely be challenging to get, you know, a lot of sales out of retail. I think that if that standard, you know, if it was more 50, 50 split, I think you'd probably hearing more rumblings about that standard edition coming to retail. That way they could crank up the FOMO on the miniatures and yeah. also really say like, Hey, we've got a solid retail offer. Yep. So I like Ryan, I, I typically do not go into the Kickstarter previews and I've done some Kickstarter previews. I uh, would try to give my most honest and objective opinion and tell who the game is for. But uh, I do often know that a lot of them can be marketing based. I know you got before you play on there, which is going to do a playthrough, something I just haven't had time to really watch. But my main reason for not looking at the videos in this one, and uh, I'd love to get some feedback from uh, you, Robin, Anna Marie, if you have, is because I've not seen anything on the solo and co-op mode. For a game at this price level, for me, if there's no solo and co-op, like, I'm not buying it. Like, I've made the mistake. I've had too many of those games in my collection. There's a few of them left, but most of them have been able to get out the door without uh, taking any hits on. But it's just one of those things for me. If we're getting near that $200 mark, I better be able to play it with Julie and we better have a great time and play it the way we want to play it. And then if the competitive mode is better than the solo and co-op, that's even better because that's that'll just get it to the table that much more often. Yeah. Um, as far as solo goes, yeah, it's it, that's not a uh, make or break for us. For We just don't do it often. But Generally, if, yeah, if we have time, we're playing the game together. It's not often that we're like with other I'm things. Doing it or she's doing yeah. it. No, but with the co-op though and I, I have seen on their page here it says plus solo and co-op expansion but that's just about as no far as it goes and yeah so it's like uh that would be a hesitant for me if i was yes. looking for a solo game experience for sure because if you have everything you know based on the campaign or the just the gameplay and then there's nothing with the solo it, it would be seem a little iffy right? like, yeah you think with all the work that they put into this they yeah. would have a, a section on both of these uh fairly well laid out but they don't um co-op i agree with you i would love it if that's the case that we we're able to play together go through this thing and, and uh work together that, that, that's awesome and i would i would find that as a huge benefit um however we are <laughs> quite competitive uh and we're totally fine going head to head on almost every night of the week or whatever we're playing 
So we're fine if that's the case, if it's just a full on me versus her versus the dragons or whatever. Um, but it, I mean, they do say it. they say it's one to five and they do say it's it has a co-op version, but they, they don't have much yeah. to go on here. So, yeah, so it's not in the videos like that's for me. That's that's one of my main reasons why I'm looking at lowering the pledge, because I do not see anything on the solo co-op mode. And typically any time that that's been a big selling feature of a game for me, it's always gone bad unless there's some yeah. big features of it right at the beginning. Yeah. So I think we've talked enough really about like the core pledge, the, the stretch goals that we got, that they got in there. So I don't, I don't think there's really more that we need to talk about necessarily the, the campaign itself in terms of like that base level pledge and what you're getting in the deluxe. I, I think we all agree that there's a lot of value in that deluxe pledge, especially with all those stretch goals and the miniatures, you're really going to get a great presentation of the Witcher on the table. Mm -hmm. So as we're, there's really no good or bad exclusives to talk about, let's talk about some of the add-ons. So there is a mage add-on as well as the, uh, I'm drawing a blank on it right now. I've, I've the got- The legendary the hunt. Yes, the legendary hunt add-on. And how do you feel about those add-ons? Because that, that was another thing that kind of took me back just a little bit because of the, the cost and where that puts the game even more in the price range with uh, out the solo and the co-op mode being visible. Yeah, so that I so I so that's one thing I saw today because I haven't visited this project in quite some time. Um, mages, 40 euros. Legendary Hunt, 35 euros. 75 euros for just those two and it looks like just a bunch of miniatures and some cards that you add into your game. That's already more than your standard core box. Just for those two, they yeah. don't look like huge expansions they just look like just adding on some extra monsters and some extra characters that you can that you can be i that that takes me i don't know if i would actually go in on those no for me so for us uh well she said right there no chance no way i'm spending 70 bucks for 12 minutes 70 euros or 70 euros 70 pardon euros, me yeah uh for for a dozen miniatures when I've already got, you know, I don't know uh, well, how many are in the with game. With all the matter. stretch goals that were even unlocked, it's it was kind of funny when I was looking at them. But why wouldn't these have just been extra stretch goals when you've got so many added miniatures in there already? Why would I spend it's another? Because they want another seventy euros. Yeah, but why? Like, why would I spend that much when I've already got so much coming? Like, I, I don't. I don't uh, yeah. Unless they yeah. add a whole bunch to the game, but it. I don't know. It, if they wanted to hook a guy like me who's, or us, uh, that are, you know, usually in for this type of thing, um, even they're, they're pricing themselves out on, a, on on me. Like if they'd cut that in half, I'd have, I'd have really uh, thought about it. Um, but no, you, like he, like Ryan just said, it's 70 euros. It's more than the base box. No chance. Just, I, I don't know what they're really thinking there, but no chance. For we're us. fishing for the, the big, the big fish like Ryan and I can get when, uh, for example, I, I went all in on ISS Vanguard. I tried not to, but I just kept looking at the game and I'm like, Oh my God, this is Star Trek. Like this is like Star Trek as a board game. I'm like, uh, like this is everything I've ever wanted from a, like a Star Trek style game. And like, I'm like, fine, you got me, you got me. That, that's who they're going <laughs> after. They're going for the, the people that are like, the Witcher fans that are like, I can play Mage now too. Like they might never even play that Mage. Like let's, like that's a whole other story, and that's another problem that I potentially see with the game is is the the play length. But they're like, I love the Witcher. I want to play a Witcher. I want to play a Mage. The Mages is a no brainer. Also, they recognize some of those monsters from playing the the video game a lot or reading the books. Well, that's the other hook for them as well. Yeah, that's that's exactly I think what they're going for. Yeah. And I just want to know who did the evaluation on these, these on these expansions. Like how how did they come up with that forty and thirty five dollar? Yeah. Like even the thirty five euro. Sorry, the thirty five euro one has more miniatures than the um, than the mages expansion to it. <laughs> and, it's, uh, and it's less. Well, I, I guess there's more cards yeah. in the in the in the mages by by a quite actually by quite a bit. Yeah, I just saw that. Well, you know, like I've Henry has not played uh, the Witcher games much. She's watched me play, which is why I'm excited for the game because I I'm not yeah. a huge video gamer, so I've watched him play a lot of games because I do like the storylines a lot that they have in the games. But um, I always found this one intriguing, but just I'm not 
in, I can't, I'm not very good at them. So seeing it in a board game, I was really excited to actually get to experience it and play through it. So uh, I'm excited for the game to come, but I, I guess it wouldn't really, um, yeah. matter if I was playing as a mage or no, then, as, and then I, I agree else. on that as well. Like even from someone who hasn't played the game, doesn't care about playing as the mage me who've played the games, I still don't care about playing as the mage. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. It hasn't really, hasn't hooked me and I, I'm, I haven't given a second thought. I'm not doing those. Um, I, d- I definitely think that this is a good example of access. And as Adam Re put it, I, I think these should have been legitimate stretch goals instead of being stretch goals that are unlocked and then put in behind a paywall. I mean, yes. that's exactly what it is. It's, it's straight up trying to cover additional costs, but also make a significant amount of profit by saying, hey, like, you know, you got to get this stuff at the same time. I mean, you often see it with with Simon and they they definitely are the masters of doing that. And I dread their Masters of the Universe campaign because I don't even want to know how much that's going to cost, but there's a good chance I might just open my wallet or yeah. the, one, the one, the bad one for you, for you, Rob, is going to be, I don't know if you bought Batman uh, Gotham City Chronicles at all. Oh, yeah. So did yeah. you get a season two or no? No, not, no, no. So the season, the full reprint's coming with full co-op in season three. So they're making full co-op. So it will actually be able to be played very easily, solo co-op. And I'm looking at that and I'm like, well, so now you're going to get me on season two, which I got like one thing from, and now you're going to get me on season three. <laughs> oh. but, but that's exactly the kind of thing they're going for. It's like they're, get, they're getting those fans that need to have this content. Yeah, and you know, I just does this one not seem like a weird add-on? Like it seems like if they were gonna say they were gonna do this, they're gonna have two things available as add-ons. It seems like the mages was probably not one of the better choices. I don't know. It just seems like if people are going in here to be the witchers, like you're talking swords and axes and things about killing monsters versus uh like the magical side of things. It just seems like the this might have been better as one of the actual stretch goal I wanted to try to make money off of me they could have had some crazy monster that I was able to slay instead that I was like I want that right I don't know I I think it's going after the Netflix audience because the mages were such a big part of the show the Yennefer so a lot of that audience that'll know the Witcher especially even if they're going with the old world like CG Project Red's involved but like forget the games at this point that's why they're back there they're they're targeting both audiences so definitely going to be a set that are going to go right for the mages because they're very interesting good point good point come here from a game yeah video gamer versus the 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 show yeah no good point I like that yeah yeah I I think it's a good addition but i feel like this is when you see what they're really going after and i i do think uh ryan a very valid point that i feel like these are very much overpriced in terms of what you're actually getting for the content oh yeah yeah 100 percent. so am i crazy as i keep scrolling up and down this page there's is like super little about the actual gameplay other than like you may you have to watch like a video, video. Of, 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 of some guys of some guys playing the game but other than that the description of how i'm actually playing this game and there's not even a rule book on here no. i don't even see i don't even see a rule book is are, are so are these some of those red flags you may have been talking about jason <laughs> Yes, I, I think we're that, that's a perfect segue because uh, we talked about the sort of the excess and value of like the add-ons. We've talked about the uh, the main box, but you know, let's let's talk about some of the red flags right now. So, I mean, there's clearly a rule book. There is a full how to play like playthrough done by before you play, and they're they're very respectable. They're good at what they do, so it, it's not like they're going to be doing a like Kickstarter, like promo paid for marketing uh, type deal. Like I've never seen any of that type of content from from them. But as you're pointing out, Ryan, like there is no rule book. There is no way for all of us to dive in and, and check out these rules and see how it's going to necessarily appeal to us. How is that deck building going to work? Is there something that I'm going to see in the rules that I'm not going to like? Because more often than not, when you're watching someone else playing the game, I mean, if the, the rule book could be a complete disaster, but is a Kickstarter preview. And if you're doing it at the same, at the level of before you play and a lot of the people involved, you're messaging the designer, like the designer is going to get on a, 
a video chat like this and walk you through the game. Uh, <laughs> who knows how, how good that's going to be like in translation once it gets to the table. Uh, let's look at the disaster that was, uh, or that is Etherfields right now, specifically because of how many people hate the rule book. I mean, I saw a lot of people complaining about the Nemesis rule book. I didn't find it overly complicated, but the general consensus was that Etherfields rule book should be killed with fire and reborn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is, which is, I think what they're doing with the second wave, I think all uh, everybody who backed that is part of their second wave is that they're getting this updated um, rule book now. And plus they're also the, whatever the new uh, they, they had, they have a new mode of play that kind of like takes out like a lot of this grind thing that people were complaining about of the original. Now you can play in a new mode. So they're adding that to the rule book as well. And. Well, that's good because I haven't played it yet and it was about to hit my, uh, sell before i played it just because uh too many games came at once <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's that's definitely a big red flag for me and as we were discussing the fact that there is no examples of the solo and co-op mode which for me no any game that's going to be essentially hitting that because look in canadian dollars so for those of you watching the state of other countries this is going to hit basically 300 dollars canadian for for us or more if we're going all in plus the shipping that that's the price range where we're at and i've got I the number i got i did the calculation right now if you wanted everything um those two add-on expansions plus the shipping and if you wanted that extra alternate sculpt and if you got those we didn't even talk about that they had metal coins that look like very generic fantasy metal coins yes. <laughs> but everything but if you got everything it's 248 euro which is 364 canadian yeah, so you're you're getting close to the what should be the real cost of a PlayStation Five for someone lucky enough to buy it off the shelf. <laughs> now that's exactly where we're going, and the question is, how many times am I going to play this game? And to me, that is the other real red flag when I look at this game, is the play time because just getting older, having kids, I love longer games, but I'm finding that it's like two hours to two and a half hours is when we're starting to max out on a game, a game that's going to take three hours. Sure enough, I can potentially get it played at game night. But if I spend 400 bucks on this game, how many times am I going to get it played at game night? I'm going to have to play that thing at game night every night for a year to finally be like, I I got my money's worth on this thing. <laughs> yeah. It's saying 90 to 150 minutes. So we know that it'll be longer than that. At least for your first couple of yeah. ones. Yeah. And no, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. We're in the same boat with the kids. I, I, we're all here in the same boat, I believe. And um, yeah, it's game time is precious for sure. Yeah. Um, so no, that's something to consider. Um, mm, that's my real fly because at least if it's co-op, I don't mind stepping away from it. We're working together. It's not like, you know, maybe one of us steps away the, and one keeps thinking about the game. The other one's, you know, busy with the kid. Then all of a sudden you come back at the table and you're like, what happened? What was that combo? Oh, I've been planning it for the last three hours. You just didn't realize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that that kind of happened with rebellion. Not quite that we stepped away, but uh, I set a trap for Julie and she hasn't wanted to take it out since. <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> so that's a concern for me. It's, I can't see the solo. I can't see the co-op. I don't have the rule book. And that playtime is just, yeah. it's, 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 wor it's rather worried them for the price I'm going to be spending on the game. That's why I'm really thinking I'm going to be taking it down to a dollar and trying to give the game a little bit more time to stew. I, I don't think that anyone backing The Witcher The Old World is necessarily going to be getting a bad game. I just don't know if it's like, quite fully baked oh. yet well, I, I i think you hit it there I, I i don't think i would bet that this is going to be pretty good mm -hmm. uh, but is it worth that money especially if you want to play the solo like if that's a big yeah. part right oh, yeah if, this if, is, if, yeah. if the solo is going to help you get it to the table more often to get that value out of the purchase but you can't see what the solo is about and like how it's playing and if it's going to be good that's definitely a big going to be a big part of the question part of it. Yeah. yeah how how much how much different is that solo co-op based off of the very little stuff that I, we actually have about it right now like right now just the, the, the brief little description the brief little descriptions like i don't have time to watch these videos 
yeah. uh, that are on here that are on here. Like the, these descriptions aren't blowing me away gameplay wise. No. I can see the potential though. Like I love the mm-hmm. idea, like adventuring, leveling up, build deck building. Like this is a lot of the stuff that Julie and I absolutely love to do in our games. Like this game seems like it was expressly made for us. That like we don't always love playing co-op games sorry, competitive games against each other because it can get a little bit too rough head to head, but there are certain ones that we really enjoy. Red Rising, as you can see behind over there, like that one went over super well. We've had a ton of fun with Lost Ruins of Arnak and Dune Imperium. Despite the level of conflict, it just, it feels natural in the game and it's that deck building worker placement. So like deck building and then adventuring, love it. But, you know, I've got Runebound, uh, like actually, I think if I slide over which way this way you can see runebound and that game just hasn't hit the table because of its long play time and i even have the cooperative yeah. mod for it and i almost got rid of it but julie decided they know we should keep it because it is an awesome epic adventure and we have nothing like it in the collection and even works well competitively because you don't really have that much like friction with each other you're both really doing your own thing yeah. so it, it's pretty cool but it was it's just one of those things you're saying I just can't see myself getting the value out of The Witcher. And I think that's a lesson that I've been learning more and more on Kickstarter as of late, Um, looking to get a refund on a a certain Kickstarter just because it's been so delayed. And then other games that show up and I'm like, how much did I spend? And then Mm -hmm. I go back and look at the campaign and I'm like, what was I even (laughs) considering when I spent this much on this game? Yeah. Every night. (laughs) <laughs> every night before I go, I go to bed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the thing about this this game that I just really want is that I played a Witcher game. Uh, I think CD Projekt Red was involved in it as well. I can't remember. Yeah, they did all they did all the Witcher games. They did the yeah. Witcher, Witcher two and and three. Yeah, and it um, it was it was okay, but just not what I was hoping for. And then. Um, uh this game just seems to really like i love the idea of monster hunting that's what i'm trying to get at here and i love in lords of hellas uh it's one of my favorite ways to play that game is to strictly go monster hunting to try to win the game which is really fun and i I, I, actually uh actually backed uh monster hunter (laughs) uh like a month ago or whatever so you know i could probably scratch that itch with that game alone um, so uh, be be careful with that one because that's Steam Forge game. So l- let me know how it goes. Let I'm <laughs> exactly. hoping you get the value. Of the one thing I have found with Kickstarter, especially ones that have beautiful minis like that, if if it starts going sideways after a couple plays, get it out the door because someone's probably going to p- pay you more money than you actually paid for the game. Right. I ended up buying Bloodborne and. That just wasn't for Julie and I and didn't make a lot of money off of it, but I still made like 20 bucks and got it out the door. <laughs> the a reason I, I was, well, giving that one uh, the go ahead was I, I bought at an auction a few years ago, uh, Dark Souls. Okay. Uh, with three expansions for like a stupidly cheap price compared to what it was worth. Mm-hmm. And loved it. And that's one of about three games that I've ever played solo for like a significant amount of time. And I really, really, really liked it. And um, so that kind of led me here thinking that this is maybe good. I don't know. But yeah, I did really like Dark Souls. And uh, but I, I, yeah, I understand the concerns. No, no, it's a, it's, it's more the delivery too. the, the delivery of Dark Souls was an absolute disaster. I mean, if you got the game yeah. in another fashion, you're good. I just, right. Team Forge games, it's just one of those ones where it's automatic yellow flag, at least in, in my book. Flag on the play. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there. I, I, yeah, you're totally right. You, can, you might uh, be totally right about that. But um, well, I think you get the core game, and I think it'll be if you be pretty good. I, I think you just need to be concerned if you happen to go all in and get all the expansions. Yeah, which I did not do. So, yeah, yeah I think we're a, a pretty safe on that side of thing. But, yeah, I love monster hunting. I love the idea of the whole just hunting down a monster, and taking its head off, put it on my belt kind of thing, right? <laughs> this seems cool. I don't know, whatever. Um, and this game, I guess that's the bulk of what we're going to do here because I, I think the interaction between players is can be minimal is what it sounds like in this game. Like I don't need to fight you per se, but it can happen. It's kind of what it sounds like um, where you're more 
finding your way through doing your own kind of adventure and if you do happen to cross paths i guess trouble can happen is what it sounds like but again I, so I'm that not sure. could be uh promising for the solo mode <laughs> if that right like if that's uh, maybe. if you don't have to interact a ton but that's what it sounded like from what i read uh it said that you don't really, I mean, you can attack each other, but you don't necessarily need to. I'm thinking it's all going to depend on the rules when you really see how it affects other players. I mean, uh, I do have Western Legends, which I've only gotten a chance to play once and I really like it. But I also love the combat rules when you fight each other because it's really good for the player that wins combat that initiated it. But it's not really bad for the player that loses. It's more of an annoyance. So it doesn't really mess up your gameplay. If it's yeah. something like that, then I think it could be pretty fun part of the game where it'll be like, yes, I slowed him down. But the, the victor is like, I got this awesome thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I guess. So I guess till we see a rule book, you know, I might like, you know, just since we've been talking here, I might join you and go down to that dollar pledge. <laughs> she shakes her head. Um, but um, I don't know. Like it's it's I would like to see a little bit more uh get announced yeah, here, a little bit true. more uh just well, I, just to, I don't know. We'll I, I think it's it's that price point. Like I was also thinking of going down to that standard pledge. I, I feel that if the $70 pledge had more value in it. I probably would be dropping down to that pledge and just going with that version of the game because I think everything that I've seen, I could play that, get the value out of it. And if it was not for me, I know I would sell it and still get a significant value back. It's just going at that 120, maybe getting the extras with the shipping and everything. Also having my money tied up in a game for, for how long? Like that's the other thing that I've that I always feel concerned about. I mean, I don't think there's anything to worry about this game delivering because if CG Project Red is behind it and it didn't deliver well, they can they can't have Cyberpunk uh, yeah. 2077 <laughs> or plus this over their heads. They just be in a complete disaster mode at that point. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. They can't afford to screw this up, right? No, they they really can't. So, so what do you think, Ryan? I don't think anything in our conversation has swayed me that I have to that I have to get this one I don't know if even if I even want to just even go at a doll at a one euro which is a toonie Canadian <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, I think I might even just save that and go get my Tim Hortons in the morning <laughs> I, I was literally just thinking that I'm like you're just saving that for the coffee aren't you <laughs> But every, like like this this game just like this looks right in my wheelhouse. Everything about it just seems cool. I just am so hesitant. I'm pulling the trigger for all the reasons that we've that we've listed, and plus I've still got like a like I'm like this is where I've also come from, Jason too. Is that I've got all these other things that I still haven't played all the way through yet, like Tainted Grail. I see on the back on your back shelf there. I still haven't even touched any of the expansion content. Like I'm still not even fo fully through the 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 core box i think one of the things that arrived that really dissuaded me a lot and this was like another one of the games that is just really built for me was madara showed up and i just cannot wait to dive into that game it's basically final fantasy turned into a tabletop game and i'm just like oh my god i need to own this game how much is it i'm like don't ask it's on the credit card oh what there's more content let's add that one that one and that one and then i just I don't, I need to play through every aspect of that game to get my money's worth. Yeah. But, but that just showed up. And so I, I'm feeling a little hesitant. Also, there's been a few Kickstarters that I've been sort of burned by as of late. I mean, uh, I know Ryan's in on Trudvang Legends, which I thought was going to be an amazing game. And I just, the fact that they basically rebooted the entire development cycle from scratch just kind of made me say uh, I'm out of this one and I, I know that's something that can happen and then the disaster that was Solomon Kane I mean I heard the game's actually pretty good but I mean they still haven't delivered wave two yet and it's was funded in like 2018 or something like that so yeah there's all there's always those chances yeah. for things to go a little awry and uh, a good example of where I think the Witcher could go in terms of just content and getting stuff released and where I get concerned is uh, Chronicle X by Archon Studio. So I don't know if any of you have looked at that one. Really cool idea was aliens attacking Earth, but uh, the really awesome minis and the, the theme was awesome. It was really like, you know, almost a little bit of an XCOM theme. You're joining forces with like special agents. You've got aliens that are also fighting the other aliens. You're on Earth and just like 
cool stuff very felt very similar to like almost fighting aliens in like 1950s but they had the solo co-op mode in the core box they took it out and put in the stretch goal box oh. Oh. So, and i the core box delivered i think like 18 months ago almost two years ago and i think they're still in the process of fulfilling or just recently fulfilled the, the stretch goal box so when i saw that i was like wait Wait, what? That's why I bought the game. Julie and I wanted to team up and and fight aliens because it's a dungeon crawl with one person having to control the aliens. I'm like, I'm not going to play this one versus many versus my wife. It doesn't work. Like, <laughs> yeah. so I just I just wonder if eventually, Richard, they might be like, okay, so here is your game and everything else we're still working on. <laughs> that, would, that would be disappointing. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully it doesn't go that way. All right, so I think we've talked enough about the game. If anyone else has anything they would like to add to the conversation? I no, think so. um, I think we covered a lot of bases and it's made, given me a lot to think about, <laughs> honestly. No. I After our conversation, I mean, uh, I, I think there's still a ton of value. I'm interested in the game. I will not be canceling my pledge, but I will be going down to that $1 level. I just, I got to see more from this game before I'm going to be throwing all that money out there. And I really want to spend a little bit more time uh, checking out the videos, looking at the playthroughs and seeing if this is the kind of thing that I'll be able to get played enough to justify the value, especially if the solo co-op mode is kind of a, kind of a dud. Yeah. yeah. Well, I almost. Think we would, uh, the, we'll either, you know, there's no in between. I don't think it's either we'll just go full on with the deluxe pledge or not get it at all. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't go with that standard pledge. It's just either do I want the game and want it to look the way it's supposed to look or not. Yeah, yeah. And you're not alone, Jason. There's almost 5,500 backers that are at $1 at the, at the $1 level with, with, as, as opposed to the uh, 2,800 backers that are at that standard box. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that wow. that's interesting. And uh, I was reading through the comments today and I saw a lot of people were talking about lowering their, their pledge actually was something that was becoming very common based on the updates. And people were just saying like, look, I got to see a little bit more on this. Cause I feel like there's a lot of people that really want to play a cooperative Witcher game, or they, they like the idea of having both and just, you know, that, that 120 price point when you're getting both is awesome value when you're getting one or the other, it's, it's, a lot harder to to justify especially if you have backed way too many games on kickstarter and still have a bunch of them on your shelf i yeah. mean i talked about this in the last episode but i had some bad fomo when i decided to buy uh, yeah that side i always hate doing this one <laughs> the camera <laughs> you can see Cthulhu death may die over the over the corner there where i bought the game and then i was like why did i buy it but then i actually love the game and it's probably one of the best games in our collection it's one of the biggest reasons why I ended up getting rid of Bloodborne because I was playing the game and I'm like, I could just be playing Cthulhu or a game I really liked. And I was just like, okay, fine. Bloodborne out the door. I don't need this anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I have anything more about the, uh, the, the Mr. Witcher game here. No, no, so you're not going in. You're, you're saving your toonie. I think I'll, I think I will save the toonie because there's probably another day, another Kickstarter is going to release this week or next Tomorrow. week. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's Batman and there's He-Man coming. Simon's He-Man is probably going to get get me, unfortunately. Even if I never play all the characters, my, bro, like my stepbrother loved He-Man. And I'm just like, him and I, like that'll be one of those reasons just for him to come up and be like, okay, so what are we doing? having some drinks and just having a great time playing yeah. this epic cooperative game. Totally. Definitely. Yeah, I forgot about that one. That, that is the, here in June, is it? You I, I believe, I don't think it's June, but it's it's coming in 2020, so it, it can't be that far off. I was pretty sure it was in yeah. the summer anyway, but yeah, so yeah, I'll be anticipating that one for sure. Well, with Simon, you always know that that core pledge, if they keep it at that $100 value, at least you, you know exactly what you're getting and it's always worthwhile. Problem with Simon is when they start cranking up the, the, the extras. <laughs> you know with Simon that it's eventually, if you want to go all in, it's probably going to be like that 350 to 400 bucks. That, that's, what, that's, what, that's what it's going to be. Yep. <laughs> do, we, do we call it out? Price is right rules on a future episode. Yeah. How much is it going to be all in? 
with shipping. Oh, I mean, uh, that could be a fun episode and maybe it's something that we should we should try to do in the future is, is get a list of upcoming Kickstarters and we can all take our best predictions as to how much they're going to cost all in and maybe even have like some kind of like fun prize or something for, for oh. who's right. I'd love to, to do something like that. Just complete guessing of all the major ones that are that are going to be coming in the near future there that, that, that's that's what i contribute to cardboard conjecture i'm the idea guy <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a fantastic <laughs> idea i think it'd just be a lot of fun to do and i, I suppose you would love to have the the like an unveiling of all the results like finally and see who actually got the closest <laughs> cool. that's something that we'll do so we will wrap up our conversation let us know what you think about the Kickstarter for Witcher the Old World. We clearly have three different opinions. Everyone's standing a little bit in a different spot. We all do think that there's some value to be had with this game. But uh, I think some of us that are the uh, the Kickstarter whales or used to be whales and are trying to get our, uh, you know, <laughs> get our wallets back <laughs> are, are being a little bit more cautious uh, when it comes to uh, this game. And uh, Ryan, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? Sure. So you can find Cardboard Conjecture. Uh, we're housed through Hot Podbean, but you can find us on all the podcasting thingamajiggers out there nowadays. Uh, so every Saturday, our Cardboard Conjecture podcast comes out. And every Wednesday, the What You've Been Playing Wednesday podcast comes out with a whole slew of Canadian content creators contributing and telling everybody what they've been playing lately. Um, yeah, and we're on, we're active on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow us at BC Board Gamers. That's us. All right, Rob, Anna Marie, take it away. Yeah, you can find us at Meeple Dungeon on Twitter. That's our, our, our home base is on Twitter, but we also have a YouTube channel that's uh, up and going with some reviews and unboxings and things like that. And yeah, we guest on the BC Board Gamers What You've Been Playing Wednesdays podcast as well every Wednesday. And uh, we haven't missed one yet. We don't plan to. So we'll be there every Wednesday as well. And uh, yeah, that's our, that's us. Yes, you have, you have a better track record than me. I, yeah. I, have, not been, I have not been on every week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you, of course, know where to find us. So just uh, to remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Well, I got to be on camera here. Hit the notification bell somewhere down there so that YouTube will let you know when our next video is released. Also down below in the video description, you'll find links to all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can see plenty of pictures of Julie and I playing some of the games that will have been talked about in this series, Kickstarter access or value. Also using our social media feeds, you can find the links to all of our great guests like the Meeple Dungeon and Cardboard Conjecture as we're always talking back and forth and having a great time on Twitter. And then you also find a link down there to multizone.ca. It is a great Canadian game store based in Gatineau, Quebec. Click the link, you'll get 10% off your next purchase, as well as a portion of that purchase is returned to the channel. So it's a great way to support Dice and Dragons. And then popping up in front of us all here are going to be links to some of our previously released videos. You'll have a link to our most recent release. And of course, a link that will take you back to one of our episodes of Kickstarter access or value for the moment. It will be the first episode, but I'll probably try to change it up as we get into more episodes as this continues. And then if anyone will just join me with my signature catchphrase and Julie's signature catchphrase here, we'll remind everyone to keep Keep playing playing games. games. I started on that one. That was bad. I'll do it one more time. Keep playing games. Keep playing playing games. games.